Hello everybody, hope we're all doing well. Welcome to another episode of Lo-Fi Gaming. My name is Mike, also known as Peripheral Mike, and to give you a very brief introduction, Lo-Fi Gaming is where you can relax, chill out, and enjoy gameplay footage. Um, there will be no jump scares, there will be no shrieks or yelps or anything like that. This is games specifically designed from a narrative point of view or just a relaxation or storytelling point of view. So pull up a chair, get a drink, you can have me open on a different screen or a different tab however you want. Or just have an earbud in with me on a phone or something like that. It's absolutely not a problem. Hope you enjoy the show. This week, we're going to be bringing you the Yarg. Now, the Yarg has a very special place in my heart because many, many years ago when I was introduced to it, um, the person who introduced me to it, a good friend of mine, Max, hi Max if you're watching, um, basically did the voices really well, the narrative really well, and it just stuck with me for a very long time. So, long story short, the Yarg is a game about, well, an apocalypse. <laughs> and how to prepare for and recover from an apocalypse, which sounds not very lo-fi gaming of me, but it's presented in a very relaxing way and a very kind of iterative way. So it's one of those games that I always think to myself, I can just, I can chill out while I play this. There's not a lot of stress to playing a run through of the Yogg. And it's not a long game either. So we're probably gonna play one or two games. Um, I'll show you how everything works and then we'll go for um, a couple of the different endings. So I'm going to turn down some of the amazing uh, lo-fi tunes. I'm going to turn up the Yarg uh, audio. And we're going to start. So <clears throat> press the direction on the controller. Uh, well. Press the direction on the controller or keyboard to select a character. One device may control multiple characters. So we have four characters to choose from. We're going to play as all four. There we go. And we'll start. The Yarg will be here in six weeks, and no one expects it. Not a one of us. We just keep on living our lives, week by week, unaware. So this is our main screen. For the game we've got one two three four five six seven eight different places in the city within the city walls well some within the city walls at least one without the city outside the city walls that can boost our uh, stats as we go i'll explain things as we go but basically the more stats we have in certain areas, the more help we can be when the Yarg happens. And remember, no one knows it's happening. This is just going to come out of nowhere. Not unlike another thing that's happened of recent years. But this came out in 2013, so maybe we should all be a bit more prepared. Anyway, so I'm playing as Blue right now. And Blue's got a very kind of magic-y vibe to me. Um, so I always normally get blue to, to be in the alchemy tower. We've got the forest, the arena, the alchemy tower, the gardens, the palace, the tavern, the hospital, and finally the slums. Um, we've also got stats for everyone as well. So we've got physique, finesse, mind, charm, magic, and wealth. All of which are very important as the game goes on, which you'll see. But right now, I'm going to get blue to go into the alchemy tower. And I think, though memory might not be what it was, each area has two options. So each place has two things you can do, basically. Um, so in the alchemy tower, you can clean lab or you can brew potion. I think for the first week, so this, this action will be a week long. Uh, for the first week, I think this person will be cleaning the lab. I don't want to jump them in, jumping in straight into uh, hardcore alchemy. You spend the week cleaning up noxious chemicals. You're paid one wealth for your labor and gain one physique and one magic. One day you hear cries for help coming from the next room. Running over to investigate, you see that the alchemists there have accidentally created an ooze monster. How do you dispatch the ooze? Do you punch the ooze into submission or do you blast it with magic? Well, we have both Physique 6 and Magic 6, so I'm going to go punch it into submission. You pummel the ooze until nothing but a puddle remains. You gain two Physique. The acid from the ooze sears your skin. 
you lose one physique. That's unfortunate. The alchemists apply a cream that heals the burn, but your hand just doesn't feel the same. So now we have Green, who is this very handsome chap with a big ginger beard, um, a ginger moustache and ginger hair, who's given very, I don't know, foresty vibes. So I'm going to go to the forest, and I think I'm going to hunt. What smashing legs he's got. Uh, you spend the week hunting defenceless critters. You gain two finesse and sell the pelts for one wealth. One day, you stumble upon a gigantic moss-covered stone. It pulses with magical energy. What do you do? Touch it or leave it alone. <sighs> Ooh, I'm going to touch it. You lay your hands on the enormous object. The stone's magical energy shoots into your body. You gain one magic. So now we have this red person here. And this person feels... I don't know, they feel a bit... like nobly, like to palacey. So I'm going to get them to attend a ball at the palace. You spend the week attending fancy gatherings. You gain two charm and one finesse. One day, you overhear a jester tell a joke to a group of people. Everyone laughs, but you didn't understand the joke at all. Ask for an explanation or try to figure the joke out on your own. I'll try and figure the joke out on my own. You never managed to figure it out. You've begun coming to terms with the fact that your sense of humour is lacking. Being more self-aware, you manage to exude an aura of confidence. You gain one charm. And this person, I think, feels a bit... I'm going to get them to help out the hospital, I think. So if they go to the hospital, they can clean up or tend to patients. I'm going to get them to clean up. You spend the week steeling your mind against the horrors of the hospital, making sure it's as clean as it can be. You gain one mind, one physique, and one wealth. One day, you hear spooky sounds echoing through the hospital. Soon afterwards, a glowing blue ghost floats down from the ceiling. She seems to be wandering the halls aimlessly, howling out horrible noises. She doesn't appear to realise that she's freaking everyone out. You decide to do something about it. Why me? Talk calmly to the ghost. I have a charm of five, so I don't know if that's going to work. And vaporise the ghost with magic. I have a magic of five, so I don't know if that's going to work either. I'm going to talk calmly to the ghost. You approach the spirit and try to explain, that her, explain to her the effect she is having on the sick. You're not convincing enough to be able to persuade her to stop her haunting. Eventually, everyone gets used to her and learns to live with the creepy ghost. Your mental resolve hardens. You gain one mind. So that was week one. They say the last time it came, the Yarg devoured houses whole, stole lives, tore families and family members apart. But that was so very long ago. So back to our alchemist. I'm going to have them probably stay in the alchemy tower and brew a potion this time. You spend the week experimenting with different potion brews. You gain two magic and one mind. One day, you hear one of the alchemists shout, Eureka! When you look over to see what he's done, you spot a small, previously dead ferret come to life. I've figured out the antidote to death, the alchemist exclaims. The undead ferret lets out a horrible noise and lumbers about slowly. Destroy the abomination or praise the alchemist's accomplishment. Praise the alchemist's accomplishment, it's not your problem. That's amazing, you say, slightly discomforted by the ferret's presence. You didn't hurt the alchemist's feelings. You gained one charm. I'm going to get this person to go to the gardens, I think. So we can landscape or we can meditate. I'm going to get them to uh, landscape. You spend the week maintaining the plants in the royal garden. You gain one finesse, one physique, and earn yourself one wealth. Walking past a pond one day, you see a fat little frog sitting on a lily pad. Please, sir, the frog begs. I am not a frog at all, but an enchanted prince. If you could see your way to kissing me, it would break the curse and return me to normal. Go ahead, kiss the frog. You bend down and kiss the frog. You feel a curious stirring, like a curse trying to break. Unfortunately, you don't seem too magical enough to get the job done. The 
frog thanks you for your efforts and hops off sadly. You wake up the next morning with a bad case of lip warts. You lose one charm. Um, this person's probably going to go... Let's get them to help out at the hospital. Tend to patients. You spend the week diagnosing and tending to the sick. You gain two mind and earn one wealth. One day, a patient whose voice has been cursed and replaced with piano notes will not stop talking. All of the other patients are complaining that his voice is making the hospital even more depressing. The doctors have tried convincing him to stop talking, but to no avail. Decipher what he's trying to say, or sing with him. Sing. You start to sing along with his voice. The two of you start singing wonderfully. You start singing wonderful melodies together, making everybody happy. One of the doctors slips you a sack of coins to thank you. You gain two wealth. Nice. Uh, and this person... I'm going to go to the slums with this person. So we can either pickpocket or fight crime. I'm going to fight crime. You spend the week outsmarting and beating up criminals. You gain one mind, one physique, and one finesse. That's a, that's a good reward. One night, a small child approaches you with his hands cupped and outstretched towards you. He doesn't say anything. He just looks up at you with wide eyes, waiting expectantly. Give him some coin or ignore him. I'll give him a coin. I've only got one, but you toss him a sack of coins. You lose one wealth. He thanks you and walks away. The next night, you recognize him on the street. You spot him eating what looks like a fresh loaf of bread. He sees you and smiles. You feel good about yourself. You gain one physique, and one finesse, and one mind, and one charm, and one magic. <laughs> so that was week two. It was on us in a heartbeat, or so the stories go. The earth shook, and the air went still. So week three. My alchemist is probably going to break out of the alchemy tower. I say break out like they're imprisoned. They're going to leave the alchemy tower for a bit. Let's get them to go to the gardens and meditate. You spend the week in deep meditation. You gain one magic and two mind. One day, a beggar comes up to you asking for any spare change. I will give them some wealth. You toss him a sack of coins. You lose one wealth. He thanks you and walks away. The next night, you recognize him on a bench. You spot him what looks like he's the little dragon. You spot him eating what looks like a fresh roast chicken. He sees you and smiles a toothless grin. You feel good about yourself. You get one physique and finesse and mind and charm and magic. <laughs> Let that be a lesson. Charity makes you feel good about yourself. Um, I think this person they got a physique of six, a finesse of eight. Well, let's not, let's not worry too much about that. Let's go to the tavern and have a drink. You spend the entire week getting wasted. Relatable. You gain two charm and one physique. One day, while in a tavern, a heated argument erupts between two patrons. Soon enough, fists are flying and everyone seems to be joining in on the violence. Uh, join the fray or break up the fight. Join the fray. Jump into the thick of the fight and let loose some pent-up rage on your unsuspecting patrons. You gain one physique from all the exertion. Cool. <laughs> uh, I think this person's probably going to go to the palace and maybe do some admin work. You spend the week doing paperwork for the palace. You're paid two wealth and gain one mind. One day, a court jester approaches you. Would you like to learn to juggle? He asks excitedly. I'll teach you everything I know for a small sum. Uh, sure, why not? You spend the day with Jester, practicing your juggling technique. You improve dramatically. You gain two finesse. You gain another two finesse. You happily pay the Jester for his services. You lose one wealth. And... I think this person's probably going to go to the forest to chop some wood. You spend the week cutting down trees for the village. You gain two physique and earn yourself one wealth. One day, you stumble upon a tall, nicely trimmed hedge in the middle of the woods. You sit and eat your lunch in front of the hedge, wondering what exactly it's doing out here in the woods. Suddenly, an enormous hand erupts from the foliage. Dodge it, punch it. Punch it. You manage to punch the hand so hard that you appear to have shattered one of its fingers. The hand recoils back through the hedge. 
you then run run away faster than you ever have in your life. You gain two physique. Week three is complete. And then the world was a howling fury. Chaos, screaming. The sound of all we knew being pulled in half. Week four. So... Probably gonna go back to the alchemy tower with my alchemist and probably brew a potion. You spend the week experimenting with different potion brews. You gain two magic and one mind. One day, all the alchemists decide to throw a, decide to take a break from work and instead throw a cantrip party. One alchemist waves his hand and produces confetti in front of him. Another spawns a seemingly endless number of doves from his sleeve. Then all the alchemists turn to you to see what you can come up with. A simple trick or a complex trick? I've got quite high magic in mind, so we're going to go for a complex trick. With a snap of your fingers, you bring a chair to life. You sit atop it and ride it around the room. Everyone else is quite impressed. You gain two charm. Um, this person... Let's go, ten, let's go ten to the uh, foliage again. That was quite good. You spend a week maintaining the plants in the royal garden. You gain one finesse, one physique, and earn yourself one wealth. One day, you come across an elderly man snoozing on the grass. You're that young person. He waves you over. I'm having an awful time trying to nap in this bright sun. Do you mind giving me some shade? Block the sun for the old man, or decline. I'll block the sun for the old man. Ages seem to pass as you stand in the hot sun, the wizened old man sleeping peacefully in your shadow. The sun is sweltering, and after some hours, you begin to feel faint. Gradually, everything grows dark. When you awaken, it is evening in the garden, and an ancient, gnarled tree stands where the old man was sleeping. For witnessing this miraculous event, you gain one magic. Nice. <laughs> uh, so I think this person's probably... Let's go back to the hospital. Let's clean up. You spend the week stealing your mind against the horrors of the hospital, making sure it's as clean as it can be. You gain one mind, one physique, and earn one wealth. One day, a patient comes into the hospital with sores that no one's ever seen before. While walking by his bedside, he looks at you and rudely asks for a glass of water. I'll get you some water. You bring him a small glass to quench his thirst. He takes a large sip, swigs it around, and then proceeds to spit it at you. You manage to quickly duck underneath the stream of water. You scold the obviously insane man for spitting at you. The scolding is good practice for social interaction. You gain one charm. And I think this person, I quite like them fighting crime, to be honest with you. Let's go be a, a, a noble crime fighter. You spend the week outsmarting and beating up criminals. You gain one mind, one physique, and one finesse. One night, a man walks up to you. Excuse me, sir. Feeling a little lonely tonight, he asks. For only a small amount of coin, I can make you feel good all night. Uh, two wealth? No, that's very expensive. Uh, no thanks. Your loss. So that's week four complete. When it arrives this time, how will we fare? Will we once more rebuild? Move on? Be strong? Or have we forgotten? Week five. I think my person's just going to go to the arena and oh, I haven't got any I haven't really got any wealth have I can I bet on fights without wealth yes I can you spend the week placing bets on your favorite fighters you gain zero wealth <laughs> one night on your way home you spot a rusty dagger on the ground uh, pick it up upon picking up the blade everything goes black when you open your eyes, you found yourself in a dimly lit room with a hooded man in front of you. Hello, he says. You have been chosen to be the newest member of the Silent Daggers. You do not have any choice in the matter. That dagger is now your life. You will do as it commands. In return, it will... Keep you safe. 
Suddenly, you are lying in your bed at home. Examining the dagger, you notice the blades no longer rusted. Also, engraved into the hilt is the image of a headless raven. Good, I'm cursed. <laughs> Uh, this person's probably going to the tavern and bartend for the week. You spend the week serving drinks in the tavern. You earn one wealth in tips and gain two charm. One day, the tavern throws its annual dart tournament. Uh, I will enter. You sign up for the dart tournament, ready to prove your dart throwing prowess. You play a respectable game of darts and end up coming in second place. You win two wealth and the confidence boost of one charm. Um, this person... Let's go to the gardens and meditate. <clears throat> you spend the week in deep meditation. You gain one magic and two mind. One day, a toothless old woman appears. I have a small pouch of magic beans. Would you all be interested in purchasing them? Well, yeah, of course I would. Naturally. Later, you decide to plant them in a small, rarely visited part of the garden. And yellow is probably going to go to the forest and chop some wood again. You spend the week cutting down trees for the village. You gain two physique and earn yourself one wealth. One day, during your forest excursions, you stumble, across, stumble upon a swarm of rats. At first, you jump backwards in shock, but then you start to hear them conversing with one another. They call you over. Excuse me, sir, one of them says in a high-pitched voice. Do you, do you think you might be able to help us out with something? You see, we're trying to elect our new leader, but it seems our votes are completely tied. We're trying to decide between Speed Paw the Vengeful and Blight Tooth Wise, says the rat. Speed Paw steps forward. If you vote for me, the rats will have a powerful leader, one who isn't afraid to take our fight to the enemy, proclaims Speed Paw. Blight Tooth steps up. If you vote for me, good sir, I will lead these rats to the Age of Enlightenment, says Blighttooth. Which rat do you choose? Blighttooth the Wise. Half the rats roar with tiny applause. Yay! Speedpaw bows his head and walks back into the mass of rats. Blighttooth climbs up on your shoulder and whispers ancient secrets in your ear as thanks. You gain one mind and one magic. The Yarg. It's almost here. Almost. Almost. Getting awful foggy. So I love how the music changes with each week. It's, it's quite subtle in places, but it changes each week. And I just absolutely wow, love it. <laughs> so this person is going to go back to their alchemy tower and they're going to clean up. You spend the week cleaning up noxious chemicals. You are paid one wealth for your labor and gain one physique and one magic. One day, while in the tower, one of the alchemists asks you to watch his potion while he's out. Soon after he leaves, the potion begins bubbling out of control. If you don't do something soon, it'll explode. Uh, drink it. You quickly drink the potion. Your stomach acids seem to be quelling the potion's fury. You gain two magic. Brilliant! I didn't think that would work. Uh, this person is probably... Let's go back to the garden and let's landscape. You tend the week, you spend the week even, maintaining the plants in the royal garden. You gain one finesse, one physique, and earn yourself a wealth. One day, on your way home from the park, you come across a gold ring in the grass. Uh, I would wear the ring. Upon placing the ring on your finger, orange glowing markings appear on the outside of the band. They read, one ring to rule them all, one ring to find them. <laughs> the markings unravel themselves from the ring and swirl in front of you. They form into what appears to be a fully armoured ghost, radiating a beautiful orange light. The ghost turns to you and nods before walking away. The ring looks good on you. Game one charm. I think you're going to tend some patients. You spend the week diagnosing and tending to the sick. You gain two mind and earn one wealth. One day, the bloodletting leeches somehow escape from their containers. Leeches start flooding into the hallways. There are people screaming everywhere as leeches slither towards them. 
Someone do something, yells one of the doctors. Zap the leeches with magic, or use yourself as bait. Zap them with magic. You wave your hand, unleashing a wave of magic to disintegrate the leeches. Your magical ability isn't what you thought it was. Oh no, that's my mind. Whoops. Your spell fizzles out before it even reaches the leeches. Regardless, the leeches make their way out of the hospital and end up infesting all of the nearby water beds. Well, that's okay. <laughs> and this person, I think, is going to go back to fighting crime. You spend the week outsmarting and beating up criminals. You gain one mind, one physique, and one finesse. One day, you notice a man drawing water out of a well. He is attacked by the- oh he is! Suddenly, leeches begin pouring out of the well and cover the man from head to toe. They start making their way towards you, too. What do you do? Blast them with magic? Nope. Lure the leeches back into the well. Lure them back into the well. You start taunting the leeches to lead them back into their containers. With great skill, you manage to avoid the leeches' fangs. You then lure them all back into the well. Quick thinking, you gain one mind. The storm arrives in the night. By the morning, it still rages. For three full days, the tempest puts us through a grinder, drowns us, crushes us, ruins us. But then it ends. We see the graveyard that our home has become. Our home. Does anything yet live? Is it? Are we past saving? So the Yarg has arrived, and this is what is left of our home. So Blue now needs to choose a role in this post-Yarg world. And having quite high magic in mind, I think they will be best suited to the Conjurer. You take it upon yourself to help conjure up supplies for the town. With your magic, you summon supplies of the highest caliber. With little effort, you're summoning high quality lumber and food from out of nowhere. This helps the rebuilding effort significantly. And now, green. With stats like finesse, physique, and charm. Um, I don't really... Maybe the Builder? Finesse and Physique, perhaps? You take it upon yourself to help rebuild the town by hand. You rebuild homes fairly quickly and efficiently. This helps the rebuilding effort a lot. And Red, with a... Finesse of 10 and a Mind of 13 and not much of anything else... Um, Probably Doctor. You take it upon yourself to help the sick and injured from the Yarg. You're able to fix up most of the patients in no time at all. This means that there are more people to help with rebuilding the town. This helps the survival effort considerably. And finally, um, with a physique of 16... Uh, you can't quite see that on the video... There we go. Physique of 16 and a mind of 13. Physique of 16 and a mind of 13. Hmm. I'm not sure what this should be. I'd say the smelter, but I think that has something to do with the wealth. Uh, and they can't be the same, the same role as other people. Um... It's going to have to be Taylor then. You volunteer to weave and mend clothing for the survivors to keep warm. You manage to make a new set of clothes for every survivor. Morale increases and everybody is pretty excited for their new socks, scarves, hats, etc. This helps the survival effort a lot. And so, we set about our tasks once more living our lives, this time in a way we might never have expected or even wanted. But in the end, we flourished. Towers once wrecked and ravaged rose towards the sky. Trees again took root and blossomed. We all blossomed. And though it took a long while, and though it took a lot from us, 
Our future is bright. Should the Yarg ever return, we will be ready. So that was one playthrough of the Yarg, <clears throat> and now we get an epilogue. With the town fully rebuilt, you start to distance yourself from everyone. You're worried they may find out the secrets of your dagger. One night, you notice a headless raven perched on some rubble. In an instant, your dagger is in your hand. The bird lands on your shoulder, and you can feel it somehow burrowing its consciousness into yours. Though fully aware, you have absolutely no control over your actions. Fog billows out from the dagger and envelops you in an impenetrable veil. You spend the next 20 years traveling from city to city, assassinating members of royalty, absorbing their essence. Then, with your body becoming too old and tired for the raven's liking, you are forced to turn the dagger upon yourself and crumble into ash. With the old tavern owner dying in the Yarg, you decide to take on the task. Before long, the tavern's busier than ever, filled with good music, games and friends. Your tavern's doing so great that every other tavern in the area has closed down. You start a chain of taverns throughout the city to fill the demand. Each new tavern you open makes it more difficult to manage all of them. You begin enacting policies that make it easier for you to keep track on how the taverns are being run. The taverns all start to become bland and uninteresting places to be, but since you have a monopoly, you're still making ridiculous amounts of money. He's open to Witherspoons. The Yarg changed you, probably for the better. With the town rebuilt, you decide to retake your role as a doctor in the hospital. There, you make friends with another doctor. The two of you do everything together, you're inseparable. Eventually, you even decide to get an apartment and live with each other. Then your friend gets married, and everything changes. Their spouse has to move away to a new town, and your friend follows. You try to keep in touch by mail, but the letters start to come less and less frequently. You try to fraternise with the other doctors. While they're all nice people, nothing can compare. With the town rebuilt, you don your costume once more, eager to fight crime. In an odd twist of events, the Yarg appears to have brought everyone closer together. You can't seem to find even a trace of criminal activity in the town. You travel to new lands in search of crime that must be punished. This is such a special little game, it really is because it can go many different ways. <laughs> but this is just one of the, the many the many different outcomes that we can get. We're going to go through another one now as well. Um, but this is this is one of the... This is, I think, what's considered the best ending. Or maybe not the best ending, but the good ending anyway. Um, but it all depends on whether or not you get cursed or you find certain items or certain things happen. So we'll go into... All four again? Yep, all four again. The Yarg will be here in six weeks, and no one expects it. Not a one of us. We just keep keep on living our lives, week by week, unaware. So, I'm going to try and get people to be like the best stats they can with what they're doing. Um, I think... <clears throat> This person did really well with uh, their alchemy. And I think everyone has the same starting stats, if I remember correctly. So this would give me... I should probably write this down. <laughs> let's go to the alchemy tower and let's brew a potion. You spend a week experimenting with different potion brews. You gain two magic and one mind. One day, you hear one of the alchemists shout, Eureka! When you look over and see what he's done, you spot a small, previously dead ferret come to life. I figured out the antidote to death, the alchemist exclaims. 
The undead ferret lets out a horrific noise and lumbers about slowly. Destroy the abomination. You smack the ferret off the counter and stomp on it until it stops twitching. The alchemist is horrified. You gain one physique. Um, this person, I think, is going to go and turn the gardens. Because that did quite good for all three, for three of the stats, I think. You spend the week maintaining the plants in the royal garden. You gain one finesse, one physique, and earn yourself one wealth. One day, a toothless old woman approaches you. I have a small pouch of magic beans if you'd be interested in purchasing them. Of course I would. You spend one wealth on the beans. Later, you decide to plant them in a small, rarely visited part of the garden. This person, I think, is going to go to that. I'd say that tavern. I'd quite like something that would increase my mind and my charm. And I don't think that's the tavern. But I don't think it's anything else either. Um, no, we'll bartend in the tavern. You spend the week serving drinks in the tavern. You earn one wealth and gain two charms. One day, an impromptu drinking contest is held. No, I'll just spectate. <laughs> As you watch from afar, people down pint after pint, making complete fools of themselves. You feel a little better about not entering. You gain one mind. And this person... So I'm aiming for maybe blue to be the conjurer. Uh, green to be maybe the builder. I think red to be the leader. And I know that needs charm. And I think it needs mind as well. Um, and maybe this person to be... What's the wealthiest? The smelter, I think it is. I think smelter needs, needs wealth. Um, but I can't quite remember. Although we did well with the doctor last time, didn't we? So let's go to the hospital. Let's clean up. <clears throat> you spend the week stealing your mind against the horrors of the hospital, making sure it's as clean as it can be. You get more mind, one physique, and then one wealth. One day, the bloodletting leeches somehow escape from their containers. Leeches start flooding into the hallway. There are people screaming everywhere as leeches slither towards them. Someone do something, yells one of the doctors. Oh dear. I accidentally pressed the button twice then. You wave your hand, unleashing a wave of magic to disintegrate the leeches. Your magic ability isn't what you thought it was. <laughs> the spell fizzles out before it even reaches the leeches. Regardless, the leeches make their way out of the hospital and end up infesting all the nearby waterbeds. Well, I, I couldn't really help that. <laughs> They say the last time it came, the Yarg devoured houses whole, stole lives, tore families and family members apart. But that was so very long ago. Get blue to brew some potions? You spend the week experimenting with different potion brews. You gain two magic and one mind. One day you hear cries coming from the next room. Running over to investigate, you see that the alchemists have accidentally created an ooze monster. How do you dispatch the ooze? I'm going to blast it with magic because my magic is higher than my physique. You pulverize the ooze into a puddle with an array of magical spells. The alchemists all cheer. You gain one charm. Um, I think if this person's the builder, I think think they need physique and finesse I think so I'm gonna oops, I'm gonna stay with the gardens you spend a week maintaining the plants in the royal garden well, you gain one finesse one physique and earn yourself a wealth one day a beggar comes up to you asking for any spare change give him some spare change you toss him a sack of coins you lose one wealth he thanks you and walks away the next night, you recognize him on a bench. You spot him eating what looks like a fresh roast chicken. He sees you and smiles a toothless grin. You feel good about yourself. You gain one physique, one finesse, one mind, one charm, and one magic. I need this person's charm and mind to be more. <laughs> more. Bartend. Spend the week serving drinks in the tavern. 
You earn one wealth in tips and gain two charm. One day, a bard pulls out his lute in the bar and starts playing a tune. Unfortunately, his singing is horrible and is ruining the tavern's, tavern's atmosphere. You decide to do something about it. Convince him to leave. Challenge him to a lute duel. Convince him to leave. You approach the bard and let him know that the tavern down the road is well known for its big tippers. He thanks you with the heads up, packs up his things and goes on his way. You he helps out the patrons. You gain two charm. And this person, I think, is probably going to stick to the hospital. Now tend to patients. Not masked up. Oh dear. You spend the week diagnosing and tending the sick. You gain two mind and earn one wealth. Oh, one day a patient comes to the hospital with sores that no one's ever seen before. They look like spiral relics or something out of Junji Ito. While walking by his bedside, he looks at you and rudely asks for a glass of water. I'm going to ignore you. Despite your intention of ignoring him, you found yourself completely unable to resist obeying this man's request. Because that would ruin the story. You bring him a small glass to quench his thirst. He takes a large sip, swigs it around, and then proceeds to spit it at you. You try to dodge the water, but something inside your mind paralyzes you from doing so. That night, when you get home, you feel dizzy and start having vivid hallucinations about ancient wizards. You gain three magic. You lose three mind. It was on us in a heartbeat, or so the stories go. The earth shook, and the air went still. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I need more magic and more mind. Let's clean the lab. You spend the week cleaning up noxious chemicals. You're paid one wealth for your labor, and gain one physique and one magic. One day, an artificer stops by, the visit, stops by for a visit. Blah, 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 blah. I can't speak. An artificer stops by for a visit. She is adorned with magical gadgets and gizmos and followed everywhere by her clockwork spider. The alchemists of the tower all go out of the way to impress the artificer, offering her an array of potions and elixirs. As she's leaving, she adorns the most charming of the alchemists with a special trinket. The fact that she didn't choose you was a very humbling experience. You gain one charm. Um, I think I'm going to go chop some wood. You spend the week cutting down trees for the village. You gain two physique and earn yourself one wealth. One day, you decide to take a bath in the river. When you get out of the water, you notice that you're covered in leeches. Panicking, you quickly pluck them off. You feel faint. You lose one physique. Well, that's... Those leeches could have come from anywhere. <laughs> Charm 11. I need more mind, though. I can't go to the alchemy tower because someone's already gone to the alchemy tower. More mind. I wonder if it's the palace admin work will help me get my mind up. You paid two wealth and gained one mind. Ooh, two wealth. That's quite good. One day you accidentally bump into a duke. Watch where you're going, filthy peppant. He shoves you out of the way with his hand and continues walking. Active, aggressive response. You shove him back. He stumbles slightly. That was canon. You lose one charm. Oh, boo, I need my charm. <laughs> um, well, I think this person's going to go mental, so I'm going to go clean up in the, in the hospital. You spend the week stealing your mind against the horrors of the hospital, making sure it's as clean as it can be. You gain one mind, one physique, and earn one wealth. Over the course of the week, you notice yourself growing more and more spiral-shaped sores all over your body. One day, the sores start, start glowing a vibrant blue. You feel your magical power grow even stronger, while your mind slips further and further. You gain three magic, you lose three mind. In no time, the sores are glowing so bright that they hurt to look at. Someone rushes up to you, asking you if you're alright. With only a glance, you set him aflame. Then you let out a scream that shakes the earth and shatters the skulls of all nearby. A river of blood coats the ground as you walk about, reveling in your destruction. You black out. When you come to, you're at home in the bed. Your souls have faded, and you feel like the disease symptoms have passed. And then the world was a howling fury, chaos screaming, the sound of all we knew being pulled in half. 
Now, however, the hospital is destroyed, so no one can visit the hospital because of what's just happened. Because that wasn't a hallucination, that was a real thing. So, blue... <coughs> Uh, needs to stay at the Alchemy Tower and brew more potions. You spend the week experimenting with different potion brews. You gain two magic and one mind. One day, all of the alchemists decides to take a break from work and instead throw a cantrip party. One alchemist waves his hands and produces confetti in front of him. Another spawns a seemingly endless number of doves from his sleeves. Then all the alchemists turn to you to see what you can come up with. I'm going to do a complex trick. With a snap of your fingers, you bring a chair to life. You sit atop it and ride it around the room. Everyone is quite impressed. You gain two charm. This person's going to go back to landscaping the royal gardens. You gain one finesse, one physique, and earn yourself a wealth. One day, while in the garden, you notice a beanstalk. Eat it or water it? Uh, water it. If plants could express emotions, it would let you know how delighted it was. it is to be watered. So where does red want to go now? Um, bartend. You spend the week serving drinks in the tavern. You earn one wealth and gain two charm. One day a fortune teller sets up at one of the tavern's tables. She offers to read anybody's fortune for a small sum. Uh, yes, please. You spend one wealth. The fortune teller takes your hand and begins showering you with promises of love and wealth. She doesn't really go into any detail and the whole time you can't help but feel that this is all an act. Underwhelmed and slightly poorer, you can't help but feel like you've wasted your money. That night, while walking home, the fortune teller runs up to you, gives you a kiss on the cheek. There, that's the love part, she says with a toothless smile. She then hands you a giant sack of gold. There's the wealth, she says. You gained two wealth. Still think I'm a hack? And yellow. Yellow is gonna go... I don't know what yellow's gonna do. Yellow's gonna go hunting. Why not? Yellow feels like a bit of a... a lapsed character now. <laughs> uh, you spend the week hunting defenseless critters. You gain two finesse and sell the pelts for one wealth. One day, you stumble upon a dryad picking flowers in the field. Upon noticing you, she runs up to you excitedly. Excuse me, sir, would you care to dance? She asks. I have been waiting, I've been wanting to dance for so long, but no one else has been around to dance with, she sighs. I'd love to dance. She giggles and takes you by the hand. She starts humming out a song and the two of you dance together in the middle of the forest. You accidentally step on her toes several times while dancing. After the third time, she stops you. She thanks you for the dance and limps off into the night. You practice dancing a little. You gain one finesse. <laughs> when it arrives this time, how will we fare? Will we once more rebuild? Move on? Be strong? Or have we forgotten? Um, so... Yeah, you're just gonna... I'm just gonna really clean up. <laughs> It's safer. Nothing bad's gonna happen. You spend up the week cleaning up noxious chemicals. You gain one wealth for your labour and gain one physique and one magic. One day, while in the tower, one of the alchemists asks you to watch his potion while he's out. Soon after he leaves, the potion begins bubbling out of control. If you don't do something, it'll explode. Throw it out the window. You toss the potion out the window and watch the contents empty into the town's water supply. Quick thinking. You gain one mind. You take off early for the day, hoping no one finds out. Um, just going to landscape the gardens. That's all I really can do now. Uh, you spend the week maintaining the plants in the royal garden. You gain one finesse, one physique, and earn yourself one wealth. One day, you spot a man drinking water from out of a pond. Suddenly, he screams. You look over to find him covered in leeches. You feel sorry for him. <laughs> now, what do you do? Save him with magic. Get out of there. Um, not really doing anything with magic, because I have a magic of six. Uh, get out of there. You make a break for it and get to safety. You go by the wall later that night to find only a pile of bones. Oh dear. Rough. Something to increase my mind. I think it might be their palace. Do I have my mind? You spend the week doing paperwork at the palace. 
You paid two wealth and gained one mind. One day, you decide to lean up against the wall just to take a break. It rotates as you apply pressure and you stumble down a set of stairs. You enter a large, dusty room filled with barrels. You've found the king's famous wine cellar. Host a secret party in here? Keep quiet about what you saw. Host a secret party in here. All your friends show up and the drinking begins. When you come to, you find yourself in a home you don't recognize in only your underwear. Relatable. Your clothes are nowhere to be found and you seem to be the only one home. What happened? <laughs> Who amongst us hasn't woken up like that at some point during our formative years? <laughs> Um, ooh, what do you? Oh, I originally wanted you to be, um, a, a doctor. I'll be honest with you, uh, yellow. But you, I don't really know if you're gonna do anything at all. So let's go and play some bets. You spend the week placing bets on your favorite fighters. You gain six wealth. Six wealth. Wowzers. One day in the middle of a match, a dryad runs onto the field. <laughs> Would anyone like to dance? She appears to be asking. Boos and hisses erupt from the crowd. Before you can even react, one of the fighters has already cleaved the dryad in two. A terrible shriek booms from what booms out from the wound. The crowd erupts into applause. The dryad's corpse then explodes into a flurry of leaves that cuts everyone nearby. You lose one physique. The Ark. It's almost here. Almost. Hmm, 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 hmm. What to do with people this week? Um, I think sticking with the Alchemy Tower is probably going to be my best bet, just in case anything else detracts from that. Uh, you spend the week just experimenting with different potion rooms. You gain two magic and one mind. Nothing out of the ordinary happens to you this week. Cool. <laughs> Um, yeah, go for it. You spend the week maintaining the plants in the Royal Garden. You gain one finesse, one physique, and earn yourself one wealth. One day, you notice a glowing beanstalk in the corner of the garden. When you get closer, everything flashes white. The beanstalk transforms into a small gnome. The gnome thanks you for freeing him from his magical seeds. As a reward, he offers you a choice between the following. Blessing of the tangible, blessing of the cerebral. Ooh, I think Blessing of the Tangent, please. You gain three Physique, and three Finesse, and three Wealth. <laughs> nice. Uh, so you need some Charm, and I think you also need Mind as well. And I think the Palace is the only place you can do Mind, mind stuff. So, do admin work. <clears throat> you spend the week doing paperwork for the Palace. You're paid two Wealth, and gain one Mind. One day, a court jester approaches you. Would you like to learn to juggle? He asks excitedly. I'll teach you everything I know for a small sum. Yeah, sure, why not? You spend the day with the jester, practicing your juggling technique. You improve dramatically. You gain two finesse. And another two finesse. You happily pay the jester for his services. You lose one wealth. And finally, you have a lot of wealth. Like, a lot of wealth. What are we going to do with your Let's chop some wood. You spend the week cutting down trees in the village. You gain two physique and earn yourself one wealth. One day, while out in the woods, you spot a six-legged deer drinking out of the river, glowing a fluorescent pink. Are we sure? This sight fills you with wonder and amazement. Gain one mind. As it drinks, you can see another pair of legs growing out of its back. The storm, the storm arrives in the night. By the morning, it still rages. For three full days, the tempest puts us through a grinder. Drowns us, crushes us, ruins us. That's, that's my echo dot going off. But then it ends. We see the graveyard our home has become. Our home. Does anything yet live? Is it? Are we past saving? So, it's roll time. So, Blue has been investing heavily in mind and magic. So, they're going to be the conjurer. You take it upon yourself to help conjure up supplies for the town. 
With your magic, you summon supplies of the highest caliber. With little effort, you're summoning high quality lumber and food from out of nowhere. This helps the rebuilding efforts significantly. Green. Now, green, I wanted to be the builder, which I think is physique and finesse. Yes. Yes, it is. You take it upon yourself to help rebuild the town by hand. You rebuild homes at breakneck speed, impressing the rest of the survivors. This helps the rebuilding effort significantly. Now, you, Red, I wanted you to be the leader because you're so charming. Um, and I think you have the mind for it as well. Because when I've done leader role in the past with enough charm, they've gone, oh, but you don't have the mind for this, therefore this bad thing happens. You take it upon yourself to be the leader of the survivors. You expertly delegate and prioritise tasks. You give motivating speeches and act as an effective mediator in disputes. This helps the rebuilding effort significantly. So we've got three significantly's now. Now it's all down to yellow. And I'm not sure what yellow's going to do. Because originally I wanted yellow to be a doctor. Uh, but then they got cursed. So I'm not 100% sure. But then they came into some money. So who knows. Um, I know the smelter uses their wealth. I just can't remember how much. I don't think I've ever been successful with this. You volunteer to smelt your now useless coins into building materials. Your former riches provide a wealth of metal for survivors to build with. This helps the survival effort immensely. Nice. You lose a lot of money in the process, though. You lose three wealth. You lose another three wealth. That's fine. And so we set about our tasks once more living our lives, this time in a way we might never have expected or even wanted. But in the end, we flourished. So it was the same end. Towers once wrecked and ravaged rose towards the sky. Trees again took root, then blossomed. We all blossomed. And though it took a long while, and though it took a lot from us, our future is bright. Should the Yarg ever return, we'll be ready. <sighs> Lovely. So now we get the epilogue. With the town fully rebuilt, you spend more and more time in the Alchemy Tower. Your potion brewing abilities quickly become among the best in the world. Your health and mana potions are considered world-class delicacies with people venturing far and wide to buy them. But you never learn how to brew a love potion. Oh. With the town rebuilt, you start a topiary design firm. You charge top dollar for high-end designs of shrubs and hedges. People from all across the land seek out your expertise in all things gardening related. You were even named Time Magazine's most important person of the year at one point. Time, Time Magazines, get it, I like reading that. You live the rest of your days out comfortably. Your life after the Yarg is uneventful. You work, you get married, you adopt a child, you take care of that child, you get old, you retire. You go on a vacation for a few years. You get too old to be independent, so your child take care of, takes care of you. You die. Wow. With the town rebuilt, you spend nearly all of your time in the Alchemy Tower. <laughs> You tried desperately to research a cure for that mysterious spiral sore disease that caused you to hurt all those people. All that time in the lab begins to take its toll on your body. You notice spiral sores beginning to resurface onto your skin. Not wanting to repeat the past, you walk out on the docks and jump into the water. You swim out as far as possible. A faint explosion was spotted on the lake that night. Some say it was the birth of a new star. See, it's such a good game. I really, really like this. And I hope you've liked it too. If you've got this in your backlog, I would strongly recommend just having a play of it. Now, some stuff can be a bit dark and a bit depressing in this. But I think it it's one of those games, it's like a choose your own adventure book. And it just, 
I don't know, there's something there's something special about it, something magical about it, something a little bit lo-fi. So this is why I picked it for a lo-fi gaming episode. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, my, I'm Mike, my name's Peripheral Mike, uh, and I have loved bringing you this episode of Lo-Fi Gaming. Um, uh, just be wonderful to each other, and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much, everyone.